by the scientific research, now made a medical examination of the image on the shroud possible. This examination revealed that this man had indeed been subjected to torture and that he had died by crucifixion. We don't see a man that's just dead. We see a man whose face is swollen because his face was beaten. And you can actually see one cheek is more swollen than the other, but both are. There are scourge marks from a Roman flagrum, which was a whip with three leather thongs and at the end of each was a lead weight that shaped like a dumbbell uh, the weightlifters use. And his body is covered with these scourge marks over 120. In flagellation, In flagellation as applied by the Romans, the blows not only tore the skin, but as a result of their energy, which was absorbed in a few microseconds, they caused extremely serious internal lesions. It is truly a horrible torture. This was a man who, at the end of the scourging, was going to die. His kidneys had ceased to function. He was losing liters of blood. He was completely dehydrated. The man on the cross had no more than a few hours left. More amazingly, those crucifixion wounds in the hands, the blood stains on the shroud show crucifixion through the wrist because the Romans knew if they crucified in the palm, you could tear it loose. But if they nail you here, and the nail comes here, you can never pull this loose. We also see blood stains covering his head, as if from a cap or crown of thorns. But not the beautiful things that the artists show us. Oh, the Roman soldiers were not going to take the time to weave a beautiful crown. They took a bush of thorns and smashed it onto his head, causing bleeding all over his head. Every thorn that touched his flesh would have been like an electric shock for a few seconds or even several minutes. We can hardly imagine this when we read in the Gospels, they crucified him. We see a wound on his side. The darkest blood stain on the entire shroud is from this wound. And the blood actually went around to his back. So we have this bloody cloth with all these wounds, and it is a perfect match to what it tells in the Gospels was done to Jesus. This is Jesus. This is his testimony. Here is what I have done for you. Here is what the Gospels say. Here is what I am saying. I confirm them. Here is what I have done. I was completely overwhelmed because a naked body which had been tortured with traces of blood which were only too visible, should really have made me want to run away. But funnily enough, this was not what I saw. I saw a body, more than just a body, a person who seemed infinitely reassuring, filled with peace. And this wave of peace reached out to me too.
And I received a very deep and indelible certainty, as though he was right in front of me, and he said to me, Don't worry, suffering does not have the last word. Death will not swallow you up. I've been there before you. I could say that I met him. I could say, like Froissart, he exists, I've met him, this Jesus of 2,000 years ago. I can say that I've seen him face to face. And this wave of peace, I have to say that it's... The word was made flesh, the Logos, he who is the word, he who is the truth, the life, he assumed a human body. He has placed himself within our reach so that we can reclaim our dignity. Surely it is our grief that he himself bore, our sorrows which he carried. It's as though he took the worst upon himself in order to allow us to breathe again and to continue to live after our difficulties and trials. He alone is able to transform our suffering. And the risen body came out of this fabric of death. And in the same way, he invites us to this same resurgence, this resurrection, and he shows us that we don't have to remain in the depths, but that his presence alone is itself a reassurance and can overcome anything. His hands are very beautiful. When I think that these are the hands which multiplied the loaves, which bless the children and touch the blind, I see a man who is respectful, who is afraid of making me afraid. Because God is a little shy. He's shy because he's a beggar for our love. Our God, who is all-powerful, who could make the galaxies dance, is poor before me because he is waiting until I am ready to open my door for him. information or the fact that the shroud's image is a photographic negative was discovered in 1898 and marked the beginning of a long series of photographic and data processing research. Therefore, the negative was the first step towards discovering another important characteristic, that of its tridimensionality. This means that the variations in luminosity that we can see on the shroud's image represent the characteristics of the tridimensionality of the face. This concept of tridimensionality has